2012 finished in a really positive way. From a personal point of view and the business point of view, I was really happy and proud to be part of the AFA's Advisor of the Year. And based on the feedback and the judging panel making the final six and going through that final six was a really positive thing. From an investment returns and economic standpoint, it was also a very, very positive quarter. The ASX uh, 300 was up 6.8% for the quarter and up 19.7% for the year. Whilst the MSCI, which is the index measuring the global share market, was up 5.49% for the quarter and 16.88% for the year. Although with this news, everything is as positive. We have some clients, for instance, self-funded retirees who rely on term deposits and fixed interest returns and term deposit rates came down to around 4% for a 12-month period uh, at the moment, and that's on the back of the RBA easing interest rates. For clients that use our Clark Pacific Premium Portfolio Service, this is very positive news because the, those part of the portfolios that are exposed to equity markets um, such as the managed funds in Australian shares and international shares, have by and large performed extraordinarily well. For instance, the Pangana Australian Shares Fund that we introduced around Easter last year performed at around 24% for the year and 7.1% for the quarter, while the, the Platinum Asia Fund, uh, that, that has always been part of our portfolio, particularly on the growth side, returned 8% for the quarter and 25% uh, for the year. This means that our model portfolios have performed across the board very well. Obviously we have lots of fixed interest and term deposits in many of our portfolios which will bring those results um, much closer um, to more normal or term deposit rates around the 6 to 12 percent on an annualized basis. But by and large the returns have been very very strong and we're very very happy with the fact that even in the down periods that we saw uh, the second quarter of last calendar year, our portfolios went sideways rather than down with the market. The growth that we've seen and the re renewed stability is really on the back of renewed confidence. And that confidence has come about as the US economy and US legislators avoided the fiscal cliff. So the US economy, one of the major risk factors has been delayed or averted, so that's given some stability to that economy. In the European economy, we've seen the European Central Bank, Bank the ECB, come out and basically say they'll do whatever it takes to stabilise the Eurozone. So the, these things have provided a huge amount of confidence to markets and we've seen a very strong rally off the back of this. Uh, in Australia, we've seen the rebound of the iron ore price to about $120. Uh, this rebound in the iron ore price, of course, means that you know, very large companies in the mining sector, such as Rio Tinto and BHP, have enjoyed a strong rebound in price as well. Well, the outlook for the economy and for investors going forward is very positive. Uh, without wanting to put the mocker on things, uh, everything seems to be really positive. Uh, we've got the Australian economy with relatively low inflation, relatively low unemployment. Uh, we think the Reserve Bank might keep interest rates relatively neutral, if not ease a little bit. Uh, in the US, we're seeing early sta stages of confidence return um, and stability and early economic growth, but there's lots of excess capacity in that economy, which means as it comes back online, there'll be lots of growth. In, the, in China, we've seen the transition to a new government which has provided stability uh, and also renewed uh, growth expectations there. Um, but most of all we've seen renewed confidence. Renewed confidence in global markets um, and, and also we're starting to see that renewed confidence come through to the Australian economy. Um, in terms of have we seen it run too quickly? We, we don't think so. We think that uh, the price earnings multiple which is a relative measure of uh, how much people are willing to pay for companies is still trading at around 12 to 13 times. But the things, which is around historical average, 
But the thing we note in that is that uh, the earnings in which that's being calculated from is at a very low base. So historically, the earnings that are being reported are relatively low and we'd expect those to grow. So therefore, we don't think that the market's gone too far too quickly and, and the environment for investors and the economy looks good going forward. Well, our model portfolio clients, uh, we've decided to keep those portfolios the same as they have been for the last quarter. They've performed very well. Um, the one temptation and the one area of major review we have going on at the moment is with regard to cash fixed interest term deposits. As interest rates come down and term deposits are for 12 months are attracting around four to four and a quarter percent uh, return, uh, we're, we're starting to uh, pay more attention to what alternatives are in the market so we're looking at fixed interest funds uh, and other high yielding income returning funds and, and I'd say it's very likely that we would look to introduce those next year um, or the first quarter of this year around Easter time if the rest of our due diligence pans out as we think it will. We'll now be contacting each of our priority portfolio clients um, and, and implementing and updating them of the last quarter's performance and what that means. If any clients have concerns or would like to modify their strategies or discuss any aspect of that or their needs or their financial goals, they should not hesitate to get in contact with us uh, at their convenience. That concludes our session today. Thank you very much uh, for watching and uh, have a great day. Thank you.